This is Abe Freetanzer from CinemaDailyUS.com, and I'm thrilled to be speaking with Harris Zambralukos about his excellent cinematography work on the film Belfast. How are you doing today, Harris? I'm very well, very well, Abe. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. This is one of my favorite films of the year, and I'm very yeah. excited to be able to, to talk about it a little bit more. Oh, that's great. We really enjoyed making it, and thrilled to be here with you talking about it. That's great. I actually, I was fortunate to be able to see it at a screening in a theater, but I imagine that because of the state of the pandemic, a lot of people will end up seeing it at home instead. Do you think that's a detriment to the film? Um, I think, I think that's a detriment to cinema in general. I mean, we have to be safe, of course, but there's something about communal viewing, um, there's something about people getting into kind of a, a space together and watching something. It's not the same as watching it on, on your own. It, it's hard to quantify why that is, but there's certainly, I think, something primordial in human beings that goes back to the old days of saying a story around a campfire, that when it gets dark, we all kind of become a community and, 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 and go through a story. That's true. And so you've worked with Kenneth Branagh before on a number of occasions. How was this experience different from what you've done with him in the past? Um, it was quite different and unique in one way. Um, it was a very personal story. So it, it, it had this effect in a way where a friend, when they open up to you about their past and what's affected them, um, um, and they're they say something that they haven't talked about before, um, that's quite private and that was quite instrumental to their, the makeup of them as a human being. This makes you as a friend or, or someone participating in that conversation open up as well. So what this did is I think for all, I speak for all of us as collaborators you know, on the film, that um, it became something where we felt we had to contribute as much as we could and in the best way possible. Yeah and uh, that it, it had that significance. Of course, and you said this is very personal for him. What's your own relationship with Belfast? Um, to some extent, I could understand exactly where Ken was coming from, from the idea that I also was part of a diaspora. I'm, I'm a Greek Cypriot. Cyprus was invaded in 1974 by Turkey. There was a trauma to that. Um, we did end up as a family leaving. My, my father was in construction as well. And we, we moved from Cyprus to Dubai when there was a construction boom at the time. There were opportunities for uh, immigrants in the diaspora uh, from all over the world um, in the 70s. So uh, that idea um, of kind of living with a military presence, which is still there in Cyprus, is, is something I'm, uh, I kind of have a, a, a you know, my own personal uh, relationship with, but also um, a, a personal relationship in, in that idea, which my family was similar to Ken's family, is that they really didn't want these divides within communities and, uh, and that we were a family with mixed um, uh, ethnicities of Cypriots mingling together for Christmas for a uh, 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 for family gatherings and things like that within our own family, let alone our neighborhood, um, uh, within our actual own family. So when something like that happened in Cyprus, um, that was a, a that tore our family apart to some extent. Oh, of course, that's that's very very difficult. But I think that's represented very well here. And you mentioned the idea of neighborhood, and I think this film has a very confined sense of space, but one that it uses very well. What can you? How can you explain and sort of uh, grapple with that a bit? Well, one of the processes that we used to kind of figure out how we would do this film is we went to Belfast uh, as a location scout and Ken took us through his neighborhood um, and, and the places, you know, we went to the street and saw the house where he would look at Catherine's window, for example. Um, and um, there was something there that seemed to kind of be almost timeless, a community that lived looking out of windows into kind of what was going on in the street outside where people, um, you know, I was, one of the things I commented to Ken about was, well, you know, the, the prams are out and the bikes are out and, you know, it seems like nothing gets stolen here. Um, and, and he said, no, you didn't because you'd be stealing from your neighbor. 
Um, and uh, we kind of wanted to do that in the, in the film and, and show that. Uh, um, so you'll see kind of influences. We couldn't shoot in Belfast. For, uh, we did shoot some parts of Belfast, obviously, that opening and our big, um, um, our big wide shots are, are in real Belfast, but we had to shoot a lot of the film um, in, in Greater London. Um, and it influenced the way we, we the, 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 that location scout and our observations, which were mirrored by Ken's own experience in his, his way of um, describing his neighborhood, influenced us greatly. And we hoped to be as accurate as we could, at least to the feel of the time period and the neighborhood aspect. Of course, and I'm sure that some of the shooting you did do in Belfast that has to do with some of the aerial shots, especially in the opening scene. We we kind of split it into an aerial shoot and a uh, a land shoot, and um, it's funny what you take from a city. I was really taken by the graffiti, and some of it's made it into the film in the opening. Um, um, but it's it for me it was interesting. Uh, I noticed it, and and and. Ken saw it in the same way too, is that, the, that that's kind of the artistry uh, uh, that comes out of the street. That, that really, it, ha, um, it, it speaks of the soul of the city in a certain way. Um, 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 but it also, it's kind of like an outcry too from a city. Uh, so, so those were interesting little things that we looked at. Obviously the iconic silver, uh, sorry, yellow um, uh, cranes from the harbor. Um, we, we shot the, the actual pit that uh, the Titanic was built in. There's an aerial shot that comes above that. So that's, you know, that's exactly the mold or the, the, the place where it was built. Um, um, but it's a beautiful city that um, has kind of a lot of soul and a, and a big story to tell. Um, um, and we wanted to give tribute to that city. And what would you say the advantages and challenges of making a film in black and white are? Well, um, we, we saw certain advantages for our story. Um, and I feel that color is, 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 is a great descriptive medium. It's easy, you know, it's easy to identify the yellow. Um, cranes, for example, um, it, it's easier to tell the seasons, etc. But a lot of that um, can sometimes be unimportant in telling an emotional story. And you want to concentrate on the human face. And the human face, really, the landscape of the human face is the human condition. And um, it, it's all in there. And, and it seems to be a more direct, more lucid connection with the emotions going through um, uh, 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 a character. I mean, Austin Wells called um, black and white an actor's best friend because he felt that it brought out the inner side uh, of what was going on more vividly, more clearly. If it's not there, it, you won't, you, you'll have nothing to shoot. It won't create it. But, you know, with, with young Jude and, and Katrina and Jamie and Kieran and and, and, and Judy, I mean, with, with performers like that, that are just so incredibly uh, emotive, um, uh, it feels like it's a, a, it's a really great kind of way of approaching portraiture. Um, the, the, the challenges, of course, are that you, um, I don't know, that you uh, are in any way might, to some, I think to some audiences feel like you're a little rib in any way that you, that we would be indulgent or, 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 or removed. But I think that has nothing to do. I think that's the preconception of it. So you have to break that preconception. And, and, I, and I do believe it's a film that um, um, is quite open and inviting. Um, uh, and, I, and I actually think that that is partly because of the black and white not despite it. Right, it's also a big year for black and white. We have Come On, Come On, we have Passing, The Tragedy of Macbeth. I'm sure there are others. And it's just, mm -hmm. it's interesting to see that. I feel like I, I, I at least don't remember that in recent years, seeing so no. many prominent and well-received well films too uh, in, in that medium. I, I think a lot of films have paved the way for us to be this way. When, when color was introduced, there was always a choice. It took, uh, you know, for 
probably for, for quite a few decades to choose whether you were doing a, a color or a black and white film, depending on your subject matter and the kind of type of film you were making. And that never stopped in photography. So it, it's a shame it stopped in, 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 in cinema. And it seems that that's come back. But I do think we, we should pay tribute to certain films that paved the way for it to gradually come back in that way. The Artist is one, Ida is another, Loveless, the great Russian film is another one. All of these were stellar films made uh, recently that kind of paved the way for, I think, um, um, open, engaging, beautiful, emotive films that um, you, you know used uh, one of the first photographic techniques to tell their story uh, more lucidly and better. Yeah, absolutely. And do you want to work in black and white again in the future? I, I love working in black and white. And we've always worked with a little bit of black and white in Ken's film. Our, you know, our next release, Death on the Nile, starts in black and white. So um, the first 10 minutes are in black and white. So although we shot that before Belfast, it just felt like a natural progression. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me about one of my favorite films of the year. And uh, best of luck in the future. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.